Hello everyone, my name is Umar. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fine. So in this video, we are going to talk about one of the most basic topic in switching. We are going to talk about VLANs. So before we get started, let's talk about the scenario, the problem which we could face when we don't have any VLANs. Like the, you know, when there is no concept of VLAN, so what could be the problems? Now let's say I have a Cisco switch and in my organization, I have two departments. Let's say I have a management department and I have a sales department. Okay. Now, if I connect all of them to a switch, so you all know that this switch is a single broadcast domain. So I will just write it over here. It's one broadcast. That means what? All these PCs, when they connect to a switch, and if I put them in one single network, they all will start communicating with each other. But that is not what I want. I want these. Two PCs, these four PCs, let's say I want to uh, group them in, uh, like, you know, uh, pairs of two. So let's say this is my management guy over here. This is also my management guy. This is my sales guy. And this is also my sales guy. Now, if I want to isolate them, what I can do is I can put them to do two different switches. That means I have to invest more money, get two different switches, connect these two PCs to one switch, and connect these two PCs to another switch. But obviously, that is not feasible. Right? And we talk about huge environment, that is not something which we can afford to do. So now we have a concept of VLANs. So what these engineers did was, they said that we will develop a concept which will break down this particular single broadcast domain into multiple small broadcast domain and isolate them from each other. That means what? If I create a VLAN, let's say I create a VLAN 10 for my management guys. And I create a VLAN 20 for my sales guys. So VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 won't be able to communicate them. And this functionality is present inside your Cisco switch, which will identify the VLANs from which the traffic is coming and it will forward it to that same VLAN. Uh, except in case of inter VLAN routing, that's add something additional which you can do in a switch, but that is out of the scope of this particular video. So we are just talking about how to separate this single broadcast domain into different broadcast domains based on the concept of VLANs, right? So now in Cisco, you have a range of VLANs available. So the range is from 0 to 4094. It's a 12-bit identifier, hence the range. So a VLAN has a 12-bit identifier right here. I'll just make a note of it. And now what all VLANs are available for us to use? So 0, 1002 to 1005 and 4094 are reserved, we cannot use them. By default, everything is in VLAN 1. So if you just take a switch and if you connect these four PCs, all of them will become a part of VLAN 1 by default. So even if you don't create any VLAN, there is a VLAN basically. There is a VLAN 1 which is there and all the ports are a part of VLAN 1. If you want to create any usable VLANs, you can create a VLAN from 2 to 1001. So that's what I have used in my example over here as well. I have used VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. If you finish using this range, or if you don't really want to use this range, you have another available range which is from 1066 to 4094. So it's known as the extended uh, range for VLANs. Obviously, they are also the usable VLANs. So now what we are going to do is first we will move, go down to the lab. We'll take a switch, we will connect these four PCs. And we'll place them in default conditions. Like, you know, we'll, we'll, all uh, these ports will be a part of VLAN 1. Now, you don't assign a PC to a VLAN. You don't do anything inside a PC. You always do it inside a switch. So, if I have, let's say, four interfaces, I have 0 slash 1, 0 slash 2, 0 slash 4, and 0 slash 3 over here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's a mistake. 0 slash 3 over here. So, these interfaces are a part of the VLAN. So you don't do anything on the end devices, you always do it on the, on the switch. So what you will do is, you will first take a switch, you will connect four PCs, make them, them a part of this particular network, 10.1.1.0 and we will try to see if they can communicate with each other. Then we will go and configure VLAN. So we will put a VLAN 10 for interface 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 2. Now these two PCs for VLAN 10 and these two interfaces for VLAN 20. And then we will notice that you know, three PC connected on port number three can communicate with PC connected on port number four, and one can communicate with two, but they cannot intercommunicate. So, that is what our lab is all going to be about. 
So I'll just brief the step which we are going to do today. So we are going to do a pre-check with VLAN 1. So pre-check is VLAN 1. Then we create VLANs. Right. Then we configure ports and VLANs. Right. So configure port and VLAN and then test or test or verify whether what you we want it to do. We have achieved that objective or no. Okay. So one more thing over here the creating VLAN is a different part and configuring the ports in the VLAN is a different step. So you can just create VLANs and keep it, but you won't assign any ports to them. And then we assign some ports inside that VLAN, then only it will become a part of that VLAN, or else only the VLAN will be created with no ports inside. So we will do all the verification on our Cisco switch. So we will be using a simple packet tracer topology which I have already created. Let me just show you that. So this is a small topology which I have created. Now I haven't done anything in this, I've just created the diagram here basically. So I'll just go and give these species some IP address. Just uh, bear with me for a moment. 10.1.1.1 with a mask of I'll just uh, okay, I'll just give it 24 mask. Okay, so this is one, this will be two, the other one will be three, and then four. So let me just do that. 10, 1, 1, 2. Okay, this will be three. And a mask of friend. we don't need a default gateway over here because we are not talking about any inter network communication. We are all going, it's all going to be a part of one single network, right? So that's the reason I'm not giving any default gateway. Okay, so and this is the last one is 10.1.1.4. Now I'll first show you the pre checks on the switch. So this is our switch right here. Okay, okay. Enable. Let's go and check some defaults over here. So show uh, show VLAN brief. Okay. So what I see over here is I see VLAN one is there by default. This name is also default, and all the ports are a part of VLAN one. So from F zero slash one all the way up to F zero slash twenty four, everything is a part of VLAN one. You see there are some reserved VLANs over here one thousand two to one thousand five. VLAN zero and four thousand ninety four we cannot use them. There are also some reserved VLANs. So now since I have verified this, I'll just go and check the connectivity. So if I just try to ping from 10.1.1.1 to all the other PCs, so I'll ping 10.1.1.2, I have connectivity. I'll ping 10.1.1.3, I have connectivity. And I'll ping 10.1.1.4, there also I have connectivity. Right, so I have all these PCs connected in one single broadcast domain. Now what is my next step? If I just take you back over there, I have to create VLAN. So this is the pre-check which we have done. We'll take a different color pen. So this is done. Now I will go and create some VLANs. So we'll move on to step number two. Let me get this console. Okay, we don't want this. We want this. Yes. So conf t to create a VLAN, just give it a VLAN, give it a number, give it a name that's optional. So I'll just give it management, exit, and second one I'll do is VLAN 20, uh, name sales, and exit. Okay. Now I'll just verify whether my VLANs are visible here or no. So show VLAN brief. It shows me that you know VLAN 10 and 20 are created, but we haven't assigned any ports to them. So this part is still empty. All the ports are still in VLAN 1 because see, I told you there are Two steps, the two different steps. So what we have done now is we have just created the VLANs. We haven't assigned any ports to those VLANs. So now I'll go and assign their ports to the VLAN. So whenever I assign a port to a VLAN, so all these ports, these are known as my access ports. Now access port, they can be a part of one VLAN at a time. I'll just write that one VLAN at once. Cannot be a part of multiple VLANs. If I just go and write, say, 0 slash 4 will be a part of VLAN, let's say, in example 20, and then if I say it's going to be a part of VLAN 30, so it will overwrite the configuration and it will then take the latest configuration. So if the latest one is VLAN 30, it will become a part of VLAN 30. So first, what I have to do is I have to 
make it an access port and then I have to configure it in a VLAN. So here we have to do it access first, then assign. So there are two steps which you have to follow. So let's go and do that. So I'll just go back to the switch and I'll see config T. I'll go to interface at 0 slash 1. First, I'll go and make it an access port. So switch port mode access. And then I'll say you are an access port on which VLAN you are accessing. Switch port access VLAN 10. Exit. Okay. So what I wanted to do is I want 0 slash 1 and 2 in VLAN 10. So you see over here in this diagram 0 slash 1 and 2 in VLAN 10, 3 and 4 in VLAN 20. Coming back to the switch, let's quickly do it for all the other ports. So switch port mode access, access VLAN 10, exit. Let's do it for 3. So here I have to make it a part of access VLAN. 20 and then exit and then let's do it quickly for 4 as well. Okay, so again make it an access port and access is in VLAN 20. Exit, exit. Again, if I just type show VLAN brief, so it shows me that you know in VLAN 10 I have two ports F0 slash 1 and 0 slash 2, and in VLAN 20 I have these two ports P and 4. If I just show you the running configuration, so there also I can see things. So show running config, it shows me 0 slash 1 access port VLAN 10. And if I go on top, yeah. So I see. Hold on, yeah, that's it. So 20, 20, 10, and 10. You don't see any VLAN which you have configured in the running configuration. So if I just show you the running configuration. I won't show, I won't see any VLAN which I have configured. I'll just see that the ports have been assigned to the VLANs. Whenever I configure VLANs, they get stored in the flash memory as a VLAN.dat file. So you see there's a VLAN.dat file which is created. So let's make a note over here. VLANs are stored not in the running configuration, but a VLAN.dat file in the Flash memory. Okay, so this is where the info of VLANs which have been configured is stored. Info of VLANs. Okay, so this is the file name and this is the location. Clear? So since I have created all those VLANs, I'll just go and check my connectivity again. If I go to this PC over here and if I now try to ping 10.1.1.2, I have connectivity because they are in the same VLAN. Whereas if I try to ping, ping 10113, I won't have any connectivity because now when the traffic goes to the switch, the switch is putting an identifier over there. It is seeing that you are coming from VLAN 10, you cannot go to VLAN 20 because that is a different domain. Right. And if I try to ping from 10.1. This is I think this is 10.1.1.3. And from there I try to ping 10114, the connectivity should be there. And yes, I see there is connectivity. I am getting a ICMP reply. So, this is what we had to do. So, we have configured step number 3 and step number 4. We have tested and verified as well. And you have also seen that the VLAN information is stored in the VLAN.dat file. It's a 12 bit identifier. And we have seen how to configure VLAN in a single switch. Now, to configure VLAN and span it across multiple switches, we have to do some trunk port configuration, which I'll be doing it in the next video. So this was a very short and simple video about what are VLANs and how do you create VLANs, how you assign ports to them and how you verify the connectivity as well. In the next video, I'll be talking about trunk ports where I am talking where I'm going to talk about how to span your VLANs across multiple switches. So till then stay tuned for part 2 where I'll be discussing about trunking. If you like this video, do hit the like button. Subscribe to our channel for more videos on networking. Do watch our previous videos as well. We have, we have done uh, videos on different technologies. So whichever might interest you. And do comment your thoughts below for how you like this video. And share it with your friends. Till then, take care. Bye bye. Thank you.